Stand by, everybody. Yeah. Charlie, you haven't got your hammer, mate. Where's your hammer? Somebody find him his bleeding hammer. Yeah. Okay. And action. <laughs> It has been said more than once that my organ voluntary at the end of service was the sole reason why many of them came. <laughs> Not any longer. Last Sunday, the congregation made their exit to three guitars and a tambourine playing Jesus Wants Me for a Sunbeam. <laughs> As you can imagine, this sort of thing its created, how shall I put it, a growing disharmony in the pews. In the days of the previous incumbent, dear old Reverend Hartley, the choice of music was entirely mine. The pleasure I took in what to play at Matins, what shall it be this week, shall it be Bach or Handel, yet dare I test them with a the little books to hooder. <laughs> I was happy. How was I to know the day would come when dear old Hartley, descending from the pulpit, would lose his footing and sound the trumpets, join the heavenly host, enter... The Reverend Leonard, call me Leo Twombly. From the moment he introduced himself at the parish meeting, I smelt trouble ahead. It wasn't his age, although for a vicar, 22 is a bit on the young side. No, it was the whiz kid manner. I thought, oh yes, I know where you're coming from. This, after all, is the year of our Lord, 2022, and sadly, the great Johann Sebastian is competing in this very church with the wide boys, the honky tonkers, and sexy Susie and her rhythmic five. <laughs> I wouldn't mind, but he's done all this without a word to yours truly, who provided the organ accompaniment at every Sunday service, morning and evening, every christening, marriage and funeral for the past 20 fucking years. Now, it might be said, of course, that I'm failing to move with the times. If I am, that is out of respect for the old boy behind me. Now, that is a Father Willis. <laughs> Who the heck is Father Willis, you're asking? Now, let me explain. Only the greatest builder of organs the world has ever known. Well, St Paul's, the Albert Hall, Salisbury, Winchester, Lincoln, Canterbury, Durham. And, it beggars belief, the Church of St Agnes the Martyr, Little Knutsford. Now, all I'm saying is, that in 1892, the great Willis, when he was building the old boy, did not program him to play Jesus Wants Me for a Sunbeam. Or, for that matter, certain requests that I get at today's weddings and funerals. Yeah, only last week, pre-discussions with the bride-to-be, I thought we'd come down the aisle, she said, to Goblet of Fire. And what's that, I ask? She looks at me aghast and says, well, the theme from Harry Potter. Now, quite honestly, there are times when I feel like a human jukebox. You drop a penny in my slot, pull a few levers, press a button, and Bob's your uncle, I perform. <laughs> Funerals are just as bad. Yeah, again, last week, grieving widow opting for cremation insisted that when the curtains opened to take the casket, I play the theme tune from her husband's favourite film, Jaws. Because, she whispered, whenever he heard it, it turned him on sexually. 
That, that said, there are times when I really surprise myself. <laughs> Another one, a couple of weeks back, widow burying her husband, wanted we'll meet again. With some reluctance, I said, OK, and I must say, on the day, with the old boy going full throttle, we'll meet again. <laughs> Sounded a darn sight better than Vera Lynn. You can see the position I'm in, can't you? With the arrival of Call Me Leo, I've become a bit of a square peg in a round hole. The feeling that my days here might be numbered. The question is, shall I jump now or hang on till I'm I'm pleased to tell you my situation is not entirely one of doom and gloom. Yet guess what? <laughs> this morning after matins I was just collecting up my scores when a voice behind me said, I don't believe I've ever heard Bach's Einfesterborg played better in my life. I turned round, a man of about my age, very well spoken, said it was from down Devon way up here for the weekend. What, don't thank me, I said. Thank Father Willis. His mouth fell open, his eyes lit up. He said, that's a Father Willis here in Little Nutsford. <laughs> Next thing, he takes out his wallet, hands me his card and whispers, if ever you think of moving, our church at Great Bargate could use a man like you. <laughs> yeah. Marcus Claborough, Inglebury Court, Great Bargate on Sea, Devon. <laughs> Problem is, I have to leave the old boy behind me. <laughs> Still, it did set me thinking. roof. Last week someone got up there and nicked all the lead off it. St Agnes has been done over, rumour has it, by a local criminal. Cost to replace it £20,000. Twombly was beside himself. Well, what to do? So who was it who came riding to the rescue? <laughs> I reminded him, didn't I, of St Saviour's Portsmouth. Same problem, all the lead nicked off their roof, they solved it by selling their father Willis to a church in Market Harbour, not only did it pay for a new roof, but there was enough left over for a unisex toilet in the vestry. Hearing that, his eyes lit up. <laughs> Guess what? Twombly's had an answer to his advert. Yet the one he placed in church times, Willis Organ for sale. Yet some place down in Devon, apparently. Great, uh, great. Anyway, when I said I'd never heard of it, he said, well, that's strange because the one string the buyers have attached to the deal is that the present organist, Mr. Henry Pargeter, be included in the package. <laughs> My 
my last go on the old boy here in Little Knoutsford. <laughs> Tomorrow morning they start dismantling him. Six months' time I'll be pulling out all his stops at Great Bargate on Sea. <laughs> Twombley's just been in, told me what a loss I'd be to St Agnes. I did understand, didn't I, that he'd had no alternative. He said this so contritely that it almost broke my heart. <laughs> I think that sounded all right, but I Do mean, you want to hear it? Yeah. 